Good morning. Welcome to the live stream. We've got 144. I'm Coach Newton. Say hello, Mr. 144. Are you with us? Great to see everybody this morning. We're excited to be here live. And uh, we're going to start on some cool projects today. So as a reminder, we're on scratch.mit.edu. Uh, we've got some great community guidelines that are there. Um, you can read through. If you want to communicate with us in the comments and details for the YouTube video, you can find this March 13th project and put your comments in there. We'd love to interact with you. So we were sending, hey, Random Top Hat is here. Hey, great to see you. And I had some messages with Super Coder. So we're having some communication issues. And uh, today I'm going to go ahead and introduce the theme. So I like to see the, this magazine here. It's the National Geographic Kids, and I just got my latest episode. And in the sneak peek, the part that I really enjoyed was there's an article um, about ostriches and some cool facts and things like that. So today we're going to create a game related to ostriches. So uh, there's a cool little article and some pictures. So um, I don't know if Top Hat, you want to type some of the facts I'm going to read off. This is where ostriches are found. There's some cool facts I'm going to read to you based on the magazine. Um, but mostly in these dry savanna areas of Africa. So here's, here are some cool facts I'm going to read off about those. And you can see these here as well. So one is... Um, they're pretty nasty, so they kick forward and they can uh, hurt you and break bones with their forward kicks. So they, some people think they're harmless, but they can they can hurt you. They can mess you up pretty badly. Um, they also can be really loud and making noises, and that's something I didn't know. So think about these facts for your project. If you can include any of these facts somehow in your project that we're going to create today, that would be kind of cool. Uh, the other is they don't even uh, they don't only eat uh, plants and seed, but they actually eat rocks. So like many other birds, uh, they put small stones in their stomach, and that's how the plants that they eat get kind of ground up. So it's in their gizzard is what they call it, right? And it kind of grinds up the food. So I think it's kind of interesting. Could you imagine as a human, if you had no teeth and you're like, well, eat some small pebbles, son or daughter. Uh, so you can grind up your food. That would be really strange because you'd have a, a gizzard tummy full of rocks. Um, and they don't fly, but this is what I didn't realize is they can run up to 43 miles an hour. So if you want to incorporate that in your project as well, I think that's a really cool fact to include. Um, and the other one that I didn't also know is you notice the Africa area here um, in where they live, very dry. So I thought they'd be drinking a lot of water. It turns out they rarely actually drink water. They get their uh, moisture from the plants um, that they eat. So it's pretty amazing that they're, they're called the uh, camel, you know, the camel birds in effect. So they rarely stop and drink water. And if you think about it, it's not that much water to drink in some of those arid areas. So anyway, that's the theme for today's uh, coding. What do you think, 144? Are you ready? Hello. All right. So in the studio, um, this is the Saturday Morning Code studio. I'll take a quick look at the comments again. I'll do a refresh and see. Uh, so please add your comments down here. Hey, Tangled Lights is here. Hey, Random Top Hats. Thanks for saying hi. Super Coder hopefully is there as well. Uh, code along with us. Add your comments here. And... Also, you'll see I added this project. So I've got some pretty cool artwork. It's called Ostrich. So here's what I'd like everybody to do is go in there and do a little bit of remix. So hopefully you can see my, my mouse here. Just below, there's this green dot. So we're going to remix this. And I had some cool artwork here. So here's where we're going to do some coding. Okay. 
So let's see. I've got this little tiny silhouette sprite. If you want to code with that, bear with me a second. I'm going to open up my window. There we go. And then there's this ostrich here that I brought in as well as an image. So there's some cool projects. If you can just hit share right away on your project that you're remixing uh, and, and rename your project. So I'm calling mine the ostrich game. And later we'll add instructions, right? So I always know I do green flag. I like to do that at the start. We'll add some more here as we develop the game. But this way you've, you have it shared and it'll be easier to put in the studio later. So hopefully everybody uh, was able to get to this part. So let's just check comments really quick. Any, um, uh, anybody have any comments being able to remix that? What I like is, uh, if you'll notice, I imported some cool images from some artists. I uh, used Pixabay, uh, has these images. So one of the things is deciding your project. I don't know, 144, what do you think? Uh, which one, what would you do with the silhouette? Like, I picked the silhouette because I thought people could have fun with the costume, kind of playing around with the artwork on it. Mm -hmm. Maybe. And, yeah, what do you think? Have, maybe we can have it be like... So with with the shadow, maybe yeah. it can um, maybe we can fill the fill the paint bucket with more like a uh, uh, light color. There you go. So I went I went to the silhouette and so, I'm gonna pick a fill. What do you suggest? Ooh, what funny maybe color? Maybe yellow or yellow. green. Ooh, I like. I always like favorites here yay okay so that's my fill bucket i picked the bucket boom oh look at that <laughs> nice all right so this one if you notice it's an image it's a vector image but it's one object i want to show people on this other sprite it's uh i imported a vector image so if you click on it um, you can control different parts. So I was hoping people would animate a running. If you duplicate here and you create another image, you can duplicate. You can duplicate the running the running sprite. So you could click on the leg and maybe move it if you group it, something like that. And then on the second image. I'm trying to make a box there. You can kind of tilt tilt the legs so they're running and play with some of the optics so the legs kind of look like they're moving. Make another duplicate and code the legs some more. Now, what I didn't do a good job on mine was I didn't um, separate the legs here, but I just kind of wanted to show the idea. It kind of looks funny with his legs going forward. And as you notice, I'm duplicating each image after I move the legs. So I don't know. 144, have you done uh, like that before? I'm, I'm going to exaggerate his legs. Have you done animation like that where you've kind of... Yeah. Um, I've tried to make animations with this, but they don't usually turn out well. <laughs> It takes practice. It takes practice. And, 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 and I'm not great at it either. So I, what I'm doing is I moved his legs so they're so far forward. And I'm going to move the whole image up just a fraction. So as it kind of moves his legs forward, it looks like he's jumping up. And then I'm going to make it come back down. So if you want to do that, um, I'm kind of playing with different animation. Let's see. And then I'm going to move both of his legs completely back. And this is how you can kind of tilt the different legs like this. I'm going to tilt it all the way back. There we go. All right. So now, now I've kind of got my legs there. So I'm kind of curious how people do their animations. Um, and the other thing I'm going to do is we're going to create a game. This is going to be my ostrich that I'm going to have uh, trying to get food. So make his beak. I don't know, very, very obvious. So I'm going to zoom in way on this beak. I'm going to make it like a big red blob of red here. So I'm going to do fill, 
super red. I'm going to use color in my coating to see if it touches the food object. So I'm kind of messing with the colors here. Oh, there we go. My ostrich has got. So this color here is 0, 100, 100. So it's totally red on, on this particular piece. And he jumps. All right, let's try Let's see what the animation for the ostrich looks like. So the simplest animation, does everybody remember, right? You can do a forever loop. Um, I'm going to do it when I click it as an event. So I'm going to say when the sprite is clicked, I'm not going to use the green flag in this case for, for the animation. And then I'm going to do next costume. And let's do a little bit of all control waiting. And I like trying to do point one. So let's see if I click the ostrich. It's kind of funny. His legs are kind of going. It's kind of going the opposite direction, right? <laughs> and 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 you notice I created a bounce by moving the whole thing up. So I kind of like that. And it, and if you and if I did add a little bit of emotion to it. Um, I'm not going to do that because we're going to use arrow keys to control uh, our ostrich. So let's see how everybody else is doing. How are they doing on that one? Here we go. Let's see. I couldn't make the oh, game. practice animation. Yes, Pete that. Fox is here. Yay, hey, hey, super cooter. Yeah, sorry I couldn't get in. Choking on air. This is so sad. No, don't choke on air, Top Hat. You're supposed to breathe it in. Don't swallow the air. Gimo, good morning. Tangled lights. Yay, I'm glad you all made it. Thanks for joining us. So we're still, uh, we had remixed our ostrich, if you're catching up here. And what we're going to do is I'm going to create a little game. What do you think, uh, 144? So maybe instead of that, you could add at the end a 0 0.5. A 0 0.5, yep. Whoa, he's hopping really fast. And you notice his beak, I only turned it red once. Okay, and then let's add some movement, right, for controlling it. So this is, once uh, you click on him, whoa, he's hopping really, the 0 0.05 for me is a little, I'm going to slow it down. Uh, I know you like it, I'm going to do a slower animation. And here's what I'm thinking. You can do as fast as you want. So definitely, I like your idea of, of how you're doing it. Um, I'm going to make, uh, we need to add the movement. So I'm going to go fast because we've done this in other classes. So if you're joining us and watching this video, watch some of the previous ones. I'm going to do um, a forever loop. And we're going to do uh, whether someone's using the arrow keys to move the ostrich. So we're going to use arrow keys to move the ostrich around. And we're going to be trying to get its beak to get food that will randomly appear. Uh, and remember, the ostrich can go up to 43 miles an hour. So we're going to have to play like real ostriches um, here to make them get to the food quickly before the food disappears. So we haven't added the food sprites yet. But let's get this movement going, right? So we need a lot of if-thens. So the reason I need four is I'm going to use arrow keys. But if you want at home, you can use WASD, whatever you like to add um, as your movement key interaction. Those are your events. So I put, I put four together, and then I go to sensing. And in sensing, I'm going to use these if space key pressed. I need four of those. And again, I'm going to put, you know, I'm going to change it from space key to arrow key. So I've got up. Down. What are you working on, uh, 144? Are you doing uh, your own? So far, it's about the same, except I did wait 0.1 seconds next costume instead of wait 0.2 seconds. Got it. Got it. Good, good, good. Yeah, I'd like to see yours at the end, so definitely uh, I'm going to do some sharing in the last minutes. Uh, so I put, if you notice, I put all four of the ifs inside the forever. I want the computer to constantly see if my player is um, going to touch the arrows. So up arrow in the coordinates is X, right? So we're going to change X. So this is where uh, we're going to play around to change X 
I'm sorry, up is Y, left and right. 144, that was a test. You're supposed to tell me X is left and right, not up and down. <laughs> Change my Y by is up and down. So let's see. So right now I'm, I'm experimenting a positive number up in Y is 10, and I need a minus 10 going down. So at home, experiment with your own numbers. Try what you like. Right arrow is, is a positive number. To go on the left, you do subtract a 10. So I'm clicking on this loop, so it's running. I like to test this. And I want to see, there's my ostrich. That's a little, the reason I may not use a 10 is it's a little jumpy in terms of it's like, I know I want it kind of fun. That's not too bad, I guess. I don't know. What do you like? Do you have like a, an amount you use for movement? I'll leave this for now. Mm -hmm. Also, um, at the beginning, one click to maybe set size to 50 because oh, yeah, it like seems that. a little big. Yeah, it's very big. I, I absolutely agree with you. Great, great recommendation. So those of you at home, um, we do need a green flag clicked. And those of you that have coded me for a while, you know, I like to have my animals say something at the start. So uh, I'm definitely going to say welcome. Help me find food. Help me find food. And then you could add something with the facts that we talked about, ostriches, right? Uh, I don't need any water, but I do need the plants to get moisture or something that adds to the facts. I'm going to keep mine very short, so when I test it, it's quick for today, but in your projects. And uh, the artist, what do you think of this artwork? There was an artist in Germany that um, I found this artwork uh, and put it in the project. So if you go into the studio, I always recommend when people look at the project before you remix, these are the credits. So the silhouette image of an ostrich by somebody from Hassan, his name is Hassan. Uh, there's a group called Open Clip Art Vectors, is this colored ostrich, uh, colored ostrich. <laughs> and this background image is, uh, her name is Susan Mil uh, Milke from Pixabay. I thought this image of hers is pretty, pretty cool that we're using. Uh, let's see how people are doing in the comments. I like to check. Here we go. Supercoder. Yeah, I can't. Yeah, Supercoder is too late to get you in because I, I can't edit the video on the fly. Sorry. Yeah, I, uh, sorry about that. I hope you can understand. Yeah, I, I, You won't pop in the Zoom and uh, I can't uh, edit you in fast enough before we're set up. Um, I can't inhale air. won't be able to breathe. Yeah, you do have to inhale air. Just don't inhale it into your stomach. Scope to the lungs. And SP20 Fox, I think everybody's busy coding. Gimo, hopefully um, you guys are following along. We'll get you next week, CK uh, Super Coder. We'll get you next week. We'll get you in there. Okay, so let's see. We've got some movement. I've got it talking. And as you suggested, I'm going to set the size to something smaller because I do, don't need it to be so big. Let's see what a 40 looks like. That's not bad. I'm, I'm going to leave it at 40 for now. And now I'm attaching it to this forever loop. So basically, uh, I've coded it so when I press the green flag, it says, help me find food. And what I like is if you click on the ostrich, his the legs, the animation's moving. It is kind of slow, though. I'm going to do 0.1. So hopefully people can see the code. And now I'm using the arrow keys to move the ostrich around. Okay. Now, since I did the beak red, I'm going to stop it. So I'm using, I'm going to use conditionals for getting the food. Let's add these food items. So I'm going to choose a sprite. Now this is where you could add an apple. I'm going to kind of create my own food in art. So I'm starting with the ball sprite. Now you can pick anything you want. And now that's a little bit big, but I'm going to mess with the costume first and then we'll change it. So I don't know, pick one of the colors you want. I'm going to say we're, I'm working with plants, so I'm going to pick the green ball. And use this tool here. I like showing people this because I don't use it enough. It's kind of the reshape. I call it reshaping. So when you have an object and you click on it, you'll see these little dots. I'm going to zoom in. And you can create different lines with it. So yes. like 
you can create like a square, like a smooth sided square or um, really anything using the reshape tool. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's what I really like about it. So you'll notice there right now there are certain dots on there for you to manipulate. You can do a twisting or whatever. So I'm kind of taking that green ball as a starting point and trying to make it look like, I don't know, some kind of fruit or plant that you might find on the plane. So this would be cool for a project if you did some more research. Sorry, I didn't do enough plant research of what would be realistic. I know ostriches do eat a lot of seeds and plants. So I'm kind of creating, uh, maybe I'll make this my green seed. And I'm kind of messing with it. So I'm curious what everybody does with their artwork. So it's kind of large for now. I just want to be able to see it. This is my, um, I'll change the name from ball to seed so people know what it was. What was Coach trying to imply that object was? So I'll give it a name. Be, of course, it's a seed. Couldn't you tell? Um, there we go. So we've, we have a seed. Now let's go to the code. So, um, so here's what I wanted to do. I want... Let's see, 144, if you have ideas, how you, how you would do it. I may do it differently. I'd just like to hear your ideas. I want the seed to be hidden. I want it to appear in random locations um, on so the ground. So maybe you yeah. use, um, maybe you use um, when, or when I, so, um, when or receive make a when or received block so that like so if you go into the bird then after help me find food then broadcast a message and then when that message then forever go to random position wait 0.50 seconds Okay, I'm, I'm going to, let's see, I, I, I was listening to kind of how you were doing it while I was trying to code the starting message. I, I'm going to start with, again, the seed kind of saying something, right? Like, uh-oh, a hungry ostrich. And then I'm going to hide it. Um, so that way, and I don't know, we could, we could place it somewhere in the beginning. So I don't know where where do you want it to start off, right? So I'm I'm gonna maybe maybe place negative it. seventy yeah, let's forty. Try, let's try that. Um, I'm gonna say go to let's see minus. You said minus seventy and forty. Let's check that out. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's up in the sky though. I've got to do a show. Uh oh, 100. Yeah, that's too high up. I'm gonna may maybe I'll do minus forty. That'll be further down. I just want the seed to be on the ground. There we go. Oh, a hungry ostrich. Okay. So this is my starting location. Show, so it shows, it says something, and then it hides. So that's what I'm doing with the first seed. Now, I wanted to start jumping to... Um, uh, I'm going to create a message called spawn. I like using messages. I'm going to broadcast. So after it hides... I'm going to say spawn. Oops, S P A W N. So again, I'm coding the seed. We've kind of got our silhouette there in the background. I'm going to leave that alone. So my thought is I'm going to send this message called spawn. And then um, once the seed um, receives this message, once it receives the spawn, I want it to pop up in a random location. So go to, right? Just go to a random position on the screen. Now later we're gonna fix this a little bit because we'll, you'll see what I mean. It'll go, it'll show itself, and how many seconds do we want it to appear before? We wanna give our player a little bit of time to get it. Three seconds? Do you want to make it easy and then it hides? I think three seconds is too easy. Too easy? Because, so click the green flag. Yeah. And then. Whoa, it went to the sky. Yeah, I got there. I got there pretty fast, right? 
So maybe more like, for me it's point fifty seconds, but you can wow. make your game at any difficulty. Yep. So you could make this a variable, right? That's what I would do to make it different levels. You start slow because maybe you have some younger kids that don't know how to play it. And then as you get better, you make it speed up. So I'm going to stay with um, two seconds for now, right? And so now I've got the thing. It disappeared. Now you'll notice it just did it once, right? So here's the part where I created this broadcast message where it kind of spawns. But I'm going to put this, I want it to forever do this, right? I want it to forever spawn, but I also want it to not do it consistently. I want it to kind of wait. And I don't know if some of you watched the video from before, we're going to make it random a little bit of a delay. So we're going to say spawn and then wait instead of one second all the time. We're going to kind of randomize it. So, I don't know, between two and five seconds. Maybe it spawns right away in one second. Let's see if this works. Let's see if this kind of works. Does that make sense? So I'm forever spawning, and then it waits. Sometimes it waits five seconds. So that way we don't know when the seed's going to appear. Five seconds might be a little long. I'm going to try four for now. Let's just try it. So let's test it. So some of you at home, let's see, hungry ostrich. I'm just watching the spawning. So it spawned, it spawned. Now here's a part that I don't like, just the random spawning. So for some of you at home, that may be okay. I like it to make to be a little more realistic. Like the seeds should not be spawning up in the sky, right? Like that doesn't make sense, right? Like in the real world. Well, um, you can make a simulate gravity. Well. I, I, I'm, I'm thinking you could do a gravity and then the seed falls, but why would the seed spawn in the sky in the first place, right? So my thought or is... Or you could just go yeah. to... Or you could just go to... Instead of random position, uh -huh. you can do... Go to X and then negative 250 to 250, and then Y, however high you want your Y to be. There you so go. So probably... Like negative forty to zero or something. Yep, that's exactly uh, what I was thinking. Have you clicked? Yeah, SP twenty Fox is reminding me. S click save now. Um, it's blocked by the. <laughs> let's see, it's blocked by uh, by one forty four. There it is. She's uh, helping remind me. If you're scratching at home and you've done the share, so hopefully yours says shared. Now, remember, shared just means it's available for others to look at, but it's not put into any studio yet. And here's the save now. 144, you were, you were uh, right, your image is right in front of that. But I do project save. So thanks for the reminder, Fox. Yeah, she's an experienced uh, coder of mine and, know, and knows, like, the pain of losing project progress. So thanks for that oh, yeah, <laughs> reminder. Been I feel like I've made um like one hundred like <laughs> like one hundred like one hundred plus blocks. Oh no, I didn't hit save. Yeah, yeah. Or, like a lot of the time, it doesn't let me save when my projects get deleted. It says save error. I'm like no. Yeah, exactly right. Now. If, if some of you remember, hopefully you've, you've gotten this code. It's kind of random and spawn. So we're going to fix the part of this going to a random position because we really don't want it anywhere in the sky. We want more control. So this, is, this will be good practice to start. I'm going to close this window here. I'm, I'm making it smaller so you can see more of my code. So those of you who may don't know this, if you click here or here, you can kind of have your space open up so for since you guys are looking at the code so instead of going to a random position it's kind of what uh 144 was saying we want it to go to a specific location but we're going to make it random but we're going to control the range right so we're actually saying go to a certain x and go to a certain y but this is where that powerful random command comes in we can randomize the number for x 
and we can randomize the value for y. So I'm going to throw the go random position. So this is where if you're creating a game and you really, really want to control certain areas of the screen, this is how you would do it. So to me, this is useful for a lot of a lot of code. So now let me expand it a little bit again. OK, so now we need to think, OK, in the X position, what do you think, 144? Do we have any limit from left to right on the screen for the seeds? Not really, right? Mm -mm. Right, like it could be it, it could be all the way over here. Goes across the whole screen. Yeah, whole screen. So my X could be. Do you remember what the furthest left is? What is the value? The for... furthest left is usually um. Do you remember what? Usually two negative two fifty, but let's try two fifty. But sometimes it varies on different sprites. So like some sprites can go all the way up to four hundred twenty. Okay. Uh, I'm clicking on the code just to try it. Let's check it out. Here's I'm I'm taking your number. There's yeah, 250 I like because you're you can be a little the sprite's almost a little off screen and since we use that ball it's not a big sprite. So this works. So it's jumping anywhere left to right. Now you'll notice as I'm hitting it since we didn't change the y value. It's only randomizing y between one and ten. Well, that's the up and down position. So. It's only going in this range. So right now, we can kind of figure out one way you can cheat to find, not cheat, but a hint to find out what the Y is for a sprite. Like suppose I don't want the seed to ever be any higher than say here. So I'm kind of looking at my painting like, well, maybe you could find a seed up to here. Now I'm looking at the coordinates. So that's about a Y of 17. So I never want it to go higher than 17 because then it starts appearing up in the sky. You could, if you got really tricky with your coding, you could try to have it appear on the trees, but that gets trickier because then you've got to figure out like, well, is this a location here? So I'm kind of making an imaginary line across at, at Y of 17, and it'll never be above that. You can also, instead of making an imaginary line, you can switch the backdrop uh -huh. to the um, coordinate backdrop. Ooh, nice, nice hint. I like that. Uh, I am clicking save now. It's just behind. I just clicked save now, so it's, it, it's hidden. The mouse is hidden. OK, so now notice this. So now my seed is spawning anywhere. I'm going to drag my silhouetted ostrich. It's going to be like my logo for my game, maybe, is what I'm doing. I'm going to kind of do it that way. It's kind of like that's how I'm shrinking it and kind of putting it up here in the sky. Kind of looks kind of cool now. It does kind of look like, oh, this is my ostrich game. So it's out of the way. Help me find some food. Oh, no, a hungry ostrich. Is it working? Is it spawning? Oh, did I not connect the code back? Oh, I forgot to connect the code back. Okay. So let's see if it's working. Um, and we need a starting point for our main ostrich. We forgot that, right? So let's 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 pick. I want to start down here. And oops, I need to stop the code. So what is that? That is this motion command here. Go to that location at the very beginning. So right away, that's the first thing I like to tell my program to do. Is like that way it says, "Help me find some food." Where's the seed? Uh oh, a hungry ostrich. And boom, there it is appearing. Whoa, it appeared right next to my ostrich. And if I click on the ostrich, remember, if I click on it, he's kind of doing the animated kick running. But with the movement of 10, that's a pretty fast ostrich. OK, now we haven't added the code yet for, let's see how people are doing. Anybody have any questions in the chat? Um, let me know to save now. Yeah, to lose project progress. Yeah, I know. I've learned, I've just shared my pain with coders. So, random top hat. How are you doing on yours? I'm really curious to hear how are you doing. Now that I know you're getting oxygen, it would be great to hear from you. Oh my gosh, it's been 16 minutes ago. I hope you're getting air in. Come on, random top hat. Send the message. Give us hope, please. That you're doing fine. 
All right, so let's see. Let's go back to the art for the costumes while we wait for Random Top Hat to appear. Now, remember, I only painted image one. I made it red. We need to do that for each of these. We want. I always want that bucket of color to be, what was it? Zero, 100, 100, right? So we need to do that for all of our... Ah, come on. Zero, 100, 100, bucket. There, I, I need a red beak for all of them. So I'm clicking on it. Now, the reason I'm doing it red, as you'll see. So sometimes you can create a game where you, you put a conditional that says, if a sprite is touching another sprite. Okay. Now, that, that can kind of work. That does work. But in this case, I, I want to make sure in this game, if my ostrich body just hit the seed, well, that's a lot easier and, and that would be a conditional that would be like, oh, okay, if the body touches the seed. But that is not as accurate as like, okay, I've got to make sure his beak gets to the seed, right? So now it's pretty hard because, look, the seeds don't stay around long. And that would have worked. I, that should have been a point right there. So we're going to add a conditional. So I'm going to stop it and go back. We're going to go to the seed code, the seed sprite. So remember the seed sprite. Let me show you some code here. So on the seed sprite, we wanted to check, did it run into um, a red color, right? So we need that conditional. So that's in controls. And we're going to say if touching. So if any part of the seed touches a color, that's the second sensing. So these are sensing commands. And you'll notice you say, oops, oh, I picked the wrong one. It's the second one, touching color. Now, this is why you'll realize like it's the computer's very specific. So you could use the eyedropper. I don't know if some of you have ever used an eyedropper. You could always look for a certain color. This one's kind of hard to find. It's kind of zoomed in on that. Um, but this is why I picked a number that I could remember. I did 0, 100, 100. So the computer is looking for an exact match, just like math. Is uh, 2 equal to 2? So it's looking for these three values to match exactly. So if you were just a little bit off and you said color 0, saturation 91, and 100, it looks like the same red to your eye because it's a very subtle change. But the computer would say, nope, it doesn't match because the other color was 0, 100, 100. So this is where if you're using this, this little beaker thing can help you match a color. But I purposely picked something that it would be easy for me to remember. So that's why I end up using that quite a bit. So here we go, right? If it's touching red, uh, we need some kind of sound. Uh, pop is kind of boring. What do you recommend for sounds if this thing, if the seed's been caught? Find a fun sound from the library. 144, do you have a recommendation? There's wacky maybe sounds. just maybe search mo movie or movie. search and then click on me too. Oh yeah, I well I want it since you're getting seeds a lot. I don't want a long sound. Or wait, what do you oh, think? Oh then, oh, right, this I is thought like, you meant like a background sound. Oh, oh you, background. We'll do. Search we'll add that. Collect. Then you would search collect. Ooh, you've already you memorized some sounds. Ooh. Oh, that's a pretty good one. Yeah, let, let's use that. I added collect. But you made me think of something. What game doesn't have sound? I like to add my sound to the stage. The music. The music. So I went to the stage. And you'll notice we have no code for the stage. This is where I'm going to say play. Now this is where I need the music sound added. Add something. Choose a sound. What did you call it? Movie? Movie. Yep. Ooh, movie, movie, two movie two. Two. That's dramatic. I like that. Ooh, we're in the last. All right, so we've been going for like 40 minutes since we started. We're going to start uh, asking people five more minutes to try to see if you're ready to share into the studio so we see. Now, I know you aren't done. I'm not done, right? 
Um, but I'd love to see what you're doing. Even if you're not done, put it in the studio. We'd love to see progress of what you're working on. So I'm doing a movie too. And one of the things I recommend is I'm going to set volume. I want it to be in the background and not driving people crazy. So I'm just going to try 10%, set volume to 10%. And then I, I want an endless loop of movie too, right? So I'm doing a control. So we're adding movie uh, sound effects to our game at the on the stage. So a lot of times if people don't look at the stage code, this is how I know I'm on the stage right there. It's blue and there's a picture of my background. Um, let's see, volume 10%, play till done. I like to make it maybe stop for a little bit. So I don't know, three seconds and then it plays again. Let's test. Can you hear it at all, 144? 10% is kind of low. I can't, I, I can't hear any sounds at all. Oh. Because. Oh, my, my, my game I sounds don't come. Because I can't hear the audio and projects. Oh, gosh. Okay. If it's, if it's on this, but. Got it. I, I'm going to, I'm going to leave it at 15%. And hopefully those of you at home, I'll, I'll leave it kind of low, but I always recommend putting a volume control. And as you get uh, more experience with coding, it's nice to have a mute option. So if somebody presses the M, you can mute. Um, you could even do a slider where you do up arrows or increase the volume by pressing the keyboard, right? You can code it. So I just like to put it low. So this will play some dramatic music in the background. Let's go back to the seed code. Okay, so we said if start if you're touching the color red, um, then play the pop sound. Uh, I already have a forever loop here, but I don't want to put it in there. Why would I not? Do you have an idea? Why don't I want it? Why don't I want it checking if it's touching red in this loop? Do you have any idea? Sorry, 144, I'm putting you on the spot. Mom? Like if I put this checking for the red, if touching color red in this forever loop, what would possibly be an issue with that? Well, if you do a forever loop inside of... Or Wait, what would be an issue with that? Yeah, what would be, would be an issue be if I... It would be constantly checking. It would be constantly checking while moving it. So then... Um, yeah, look at this command. Wait for four oh, seconds. Wait, pick random one to four. So then after... Wait. Yeah, oh, it's, it's kind of a... It's, yeah, what do you think? I can't... I can't really find out what it is because yeah. I usually never use this code. Got it. A, a forever loop inside of a forever loop wouldn't work. Right. Yep. You can't. Yep. You can't put the forever. I just saw the if code. But yeah. The, yeah. The reason I would not do this way is, yeah, if you haven't used it a lot, it's kind of like, wait a minute, is as soon as you have this code here, the computer is stopping on this command and randomizing, and it may wait for four seconds. Well, while it's here, it's not checking for the red being being touched. Oh, yeah. Does that make sense? So suddenly you may mentally think like, oh, yeah, I put that in a forever loop. But inside this forever loop, you got to be careful. What else is it doing? Is it doing things quickly, right? And here it's not doing something quickly. So just be aware if you ever put this. So I'm going to do a separate forever loop. And I'm just going to give it a separate green flag. I, I don't like to do this too often where I have, this is parallelism, uh, where the computer's doing multiple things, which is great to do. But too many green flag conditions can kind of create some problems. Let me clean up my blocks. Let's see if people can see. I don't know if this helps people see it better or not. It might make it harder. So let's see. So I'll review what I did. I do have a lot of code. Oh, it's all hidden down here. So I have something, I'm going to try to show it all at once so people can see it all in one screen. All right, five, another five-minute warning. All right, I've got myself. We're going to start looking at people's shares. So if you want to start putting in the studio, it would be great. Let's see if this is working. So this is the code. I have it from the very beginning. I'm, I'm checking on the seed sprite, whether it's touching something red. And the only color red that we've added is the beak of the ostrich. 
which is a fast moving creature. So let's give it a test. Uh, if I click on it, I got my animation going. Oops, did I break something? Oh, there we go. A hungry ostrich. Ah, I didn't get it yet. Where's my seed? Oh man, that disappeared fast. <laughs> I'm too slow. Get it. Oh, did I get it? Oh no, the beat didn't get it. Oh, did you hear a pop sound? I think it did a pop. I can't tell if it did it. You know what? We need a score, right? All right, come on. Let's do a score. We need a score. We need a score. We can't do a game um, without a score. Also, how to make a high score. High scores are cloud variables. So if score is more than high score, then set high score to score. Oh, okay. That's how you create a high score. But okay. the high score needs to be a cloud variable. I'm going to do what you said. I'm just replying to, but now I know the random top hat's breathing. And no, no. Good luck. SP20 Fox is on a laggy Chromebook. Bear with us. At least you're here. That's the best part. All of you. Al Su Super Carla, how are you doing? He's, he's busy coding away. I can't wait to see it. Has anybody shared yet? Did you check? Let's check the... Uh, Let's check the studio here. Oh, somebody's already shared yummy food. Oh, that's yours. <laughs> nice. Oh, gibo has got some. Oh, he's got his blue. All right. Let's see who was the first to add into the studio. What is that? Yummy food. Oh, you changed the whole that's background. Oh, I was like, mm -hmm. what happened to my background? Oh, it's got nice. It's a green one. We've got Super Coder and Gimo. All right. We've got three that have started adding. Everybody else, keep keep adding yours into the studio. If you're not sure how to do that, um, bear with me for a second. Let me make sure I'm checking on my Coach Newton account. I'm going to add, you should be able to add if you're even not a um, curator. Cur curator. Let's see who's curator and so far. Oh. These are our Everyone's curators curator. so far. So... Um, Top Hat, I think I sent you an invite to be a curator. Can you check? Um, you may not have accepted so the message. So you, how you go on to there is you go into your Scratch um, mail, and then you see if there's any invites for studios. Yeah, it would be right That's up here in this little, little, little envelope. I'm pretty sure I sent you an invite, Top Hat. I did open it up so anybody can share projects in there, but it'd be cool to get you in as a curator. So it makes you ease, easier to get in there. I think everyone else that's here is a curator. You're the only one that um, has commented on the here that's not there yet. So let me know if you're not showing up, Top Hat. Okay, so let's see. Um, we need a score, right? Oops, sorry. Let's add a score. Uh, I'm not going to do a global variable yet, or we could do it right off the bat, right? We're going to go make a variable. You said make one high score, right? And should I, should I make this one cloud variable? Score. Yep, it's high score is always cloud variable. So I'm just going to do score first. Let me do score. Because uh, we have to add code that says, oh, is this a high score? So I'm adding a score variable. Let me just do one piece first. What do you think? 144. Okay, so this, this is one we should have the score go up. If it goes touching, it plays pop, and I need to change score by one. Mm -hmm. Oops, my head's in the way. Ew, that's my variable. Change my score by one. And that means we need to set the score to zero, at the very one click. Beginning. Yeah, at the very beginning, set score to zero. All right, so this is how easy it is to add the score variable in. Okay, and what I'm going to do is, um, remember, I was um, not showing up when it spawns. I'm going to give myself a chance. I'm going to give myself four seconds to get to the seed for right now. Now, what I recommend is people create this as a variable and put the variable in there and call it like level. So when someone starts at, say, level one, 
the number of seconds gives them maybe four seconds. But if they go to the next level, if they've collected five points, make it so the seed appears less time and less time, and then see how hard it is for people to get uh, the seed. I don't think um, I would want to do that online because it's very stressful. It gives you like 0.15 Oh, I seconds. didn't get a point. It didn't work. It gives you... Wait, you have to click the green flag again, I think. Oh, did it not? I'm testing my code. Maybe I... Do I have an error in the code? Ah. That's code... Wait. That should have That should have been a score, right? It's touching red. Maybe you didn't have the right color. Ooh. Or maybe you didn't have it in a one click block. Let's see. And also, I in mine, a bug if, in my if, code. If, if it gets faster and faster, that would be so hard because it's like wait 0. 0.50 seconds and then go to random position. And also, there's tons of flashing lights to distract your eyes. So, right. <laughs> yeah, that that'll make it really hard. Let's do. It. I'm gonna change my ostrich so, too. I'm gonna see if it's a size thing. Let's see, set size. Um. I'm making my ostrich huge. I'm testing. Probably isn't the size thing. I'm trying to get, I'm just trying to see if um, I can get the seed. Where's my seed? It's right, right. Oh, there it is. Yeah, it's not, it's not, I've got it's a bug. A it's not, error. my coding, something's wrong in my, uh, the the algorithm is not working. Well, how Maybe embarrassing is this? Well, at least we're not on a live stream being recorded. Oh, yikes. Delete. Cut. Editor, this is the part where you cut. We'll edit this part out, everybody. When you, see, when you see the recording, we'll be like, oh, the code was perfect, Coach Newton. We will. Um, <laughs> that would be a prick. Then everyone will be yelling at their strings. It wasn't 30 minutes. <laughs> exactly. They're like, wait a minute. You're commenting on your iPad. Oh, okay, good, good, good. All right. Sorry, my ostrich game's playing in the background. Okay, so... What am I doing wrong? Let's see. It, it seems like the seed sprite is not finding. And that you it's didn't have the right the... color. Let's yeah, see I thought I did. Point. Let's see zero. Let's see zero zero zero. Well, what I can do is try. That's a great hint, right? Um, oops, sorry. I realized my mouse. Let me do this. Uh, one way to test is if I stop the code and I just want this code to run, I click it. You see how it's yellow highlighted? So this part is working. So I know the computer's checking this. And now I'm going to kind of cheat and drag my ostrich sprite into it. And it's not it's not picking it up, right? Hold on. Wait. Sometimes you have to let go. Whoa. Oh, yeah. You're right. <laughs> I did have to let All right. So that worked. So what... Is it just... No, I think it's fixed. It's because just... what was happening was it was... Oh, um, yep. The first one was num was number one. Really? Now it's working. I hear it, right? Do you hear it? It's giving me tons of points. Mm -hmm. Oh, also? The game's fixed. What did we do to fix add, it, though? Uh, what did we touching, do? If touching color red, play sound pop, change score by one. Wait, 0 0.00000 seconds. I agree. So I, go I, to random position. Go to random position. Well, to, so first of right. all, go to random position. Wait, 0 0.00000 seconds. And then change score by one so that it doesn't add like two. Yeah. Yeah, otherwise so, you, you, you could hear it. It was going brrrr. I'm doing. A, I'm going to do a little bit different. Instead of I already have code that takes it to a random position, I'm going to hide it. So as soon as you get it, what if I don't even need to wait? If I hide it, the score should stop. Right? I get the point. It plays the pop, and then it hides. And then remember, this other code is is making it when it spawns, it does a show again. So I don't have to worry about um, it it not working let's let's try this let's does that make sense i'm just trying to hide i've done what you've done before too i add a delay where it stops let's see if this works i'm just i'm just still not sure why it, it stopped working before 
Oh, there, I got multiple points for that. The hiding didn't work fast enough. Did you see that? Whoa! It kept giving me points even though it was hidden. What? I thought it shouldn't do that. No. It shouldn't. If it's it hidden, it, no, if it's it hidden, it, should, it, it shouldn't should. see this. <laughs> because if it's Whoops. Ghost Effect 100, it should. But if it's hidden, it shouldn't. Scratch. Yeah. Yeah, Scratch there's something something, something something, odd is going on. All right, good. I'm glad we found it. I like finding things that are odd because it gives us problems to solve. Um, I'm losing track of my... Let's do Let's do the other way then. So my the hiding, let's just do a wait. Because if we kind of say, you know what? If you've gotten your point, let's just wait a whole second because it, it, you basically can't get multiple points. Um, and I'm going to do a save now. Now, I didn't do a high score, but we've kind of run out of time to add this today. I do want to get to the sharing part. Um, let's see if there are any comments on here. Whoa, my, my scratch has suddenly slowed down. I'm commenting on my iPad. Okay, so let me do this. So remember, I'm WA20BAT. To remind everybody how to share, um, I'm going to go, let's see, I've shared here. So if you go to the studio, and let's see if Top Hat showed up. Top Hat, did you get your invite? I hope Maybe you have to refresh yeah. your let's studio. See. Yeah, Top, Top Hat, I'll maybe, double check. I'll, I'll double check Top, after today's show. Maybe Top Hat. Um, er, maybe Top Hat's a new scratcher and can't join. Yeah, no, I know her. That's a good. That's a good suggestion. No, she's been in a lot of my classes, so I think she just. Uh, I might. I may have. I may be mistaken in having sent her the invite. I thought I did. Yeah. So I. I know Top Hat. She's. She's uh, has fun with animations and contributing cool ideas. Let's see. Let's look in the studio. Yeah. Sorry, as a curator, we'll fix that later. You should be able to add projects, Top Hat. Uh, let's see who's in there so far. Well, we've got these. Let's check these out really quick. Let's go into sharing mode. Here we go. Stressful, right? What? Use the up and down arrows. We got some uh, instructions here. Whoa, that's giving me. Oh my goodness, I've lost my Savannah. It sure distracts this your eyes. It's really stressful. I think this would give me a headache after a while. I think you need to warn people. If, I guess you did. You said, if, uh, if, if, you're, if, if you can't have flashing lights, do not play Yeah, this I think game. you need to put that warning in there. You definitely, you kind of did a good job of, I would say, I'll, saying, I'll, hey, I'll this put is that stressful. Warning in there. I'll put oh, there that it is. warning in there in the title. Yeah, um, I would. Yeah, just, just alert flashing project. That's a good idea. I, yeah, I like that you did put it in the credits. So, Give you a full credit oh, for that. But, man, I'll play that game later when it's not in recordings or else people will be like, Coach, you blinded me. <laughs> I like I like it. I want to look at it. It's really fast moving, though, too. And you definitely made the apple not appear. Uh, That's why it's very stressful. No kidding. It's not finished. That's all right, uh, Super Coder. Mine's not finished either. But I wanted to see. I have to find some food. I like he had it. Ooh, I've got movement. Oh, it goes to the right. Oh, he's still working on the movement. I'm oh, there's the left arrow. Oh, there's some kind of delay with the keys. The up and down. Oh, the up and down is making it move left and right. Got it. Nice. Keep working on it. Keep working on it. I gave oh, I gave you a heart and star. Super ostrich. Yeah, what's nice is I the reason I like people sharing it in the studio is. As you're continuing to work on these, I'll see the latest version. Gimo's got his project in there. Let's see. Help us find some food. Ooh, he's got an apple. Oops, I'm hitting the wrong. Oh, he got it. Whoa, the apple. Nice. Oh, okay. He's he's still. <laughs> oh, your yours is nice. Your your apple stays there for a while, so I can get it. I like it. This this ostrich is super happy. I like your controls. You've got fat. You got pretty fast movement. I'm holding the arrow keys down, and you've got the blue ostrich. Uh, I would add some cool code in the mind. You just gave me a great idea. Like if this ostrich came and touched the blue one, it'd be like, "Yo, it's my apple," and they'd uh, say, "Hey, I gotta share this research." Hold on, wait. 
You could create like a game out of that, like Big ostrich time. fight. And Big then time. where the ostrich just have to like jump on each other and stuff to defeat each other. You could definitely have lots of um, say, hey, I'm faster than you. Oh, you could embed the, the facts of the ostrich. Like, I can run 43 miles an hour. And be like, no, you can't. It's like, that's my top speed. Uh, oh, work in progress. Oh, there's Top Hat. Yay. I glad I, I'll send you an invite. <laughs> In case you don't see that invite uh, sometime by tomorrow at the latest. Let's see what she's got. Uh, click the green flag. Oh, she's got some artwork in hers. Whoa. <laughs> she's. Uh, oh, no. Oh, I, I like think that's. I, I like think the that's. Um, oh, she's got animation on the legs. Oh, sorry. Say that again. 144. I think that's change color effect and change. Um. <laughs> And I think that's change color effect and change. Um, oh, oh, what I stop change, it. I think that's change color effect. Yeah, let's check it out. Change. I, so that's you, either a change color effect, change um, brightness effect, change. Maybe it's change fisheye effect. Whirl. It's definitely changing the mosaic. Yeah. That's for sure. It's. And look at the, did you see the animation on the legs? Uh-oh, my, my dog's getting, barking at the delivery man. All right. Nice. I gave it a, I gave it a star. So as, as all of you are reviewing each other's work in progress, I, I like that. I like the way you, when you did the ostrich legs too. Um, share your projects here. Like, already she's got some uh, new text in there. Keep working on it. Oh, I love it. Love it. I love the customization. Um, Time to uh, wrap up. Thanks for sharing. 144, what do you think? I like your project. He's putting some warning signs on his. <laughs> yeah. Should, should I use some emojis to, like, warning signs around that? <laughs> that's, that's up to you. You can definitely do what you want. I wanted to thank everybody for coming. If your parents have any questions, code on at panucation.org. Let them know that's a great way to reach me. Um, and um, code on. 144, any parting words? Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. Have a great... Yes. Oh, yeah, there we go. This is uh, for Gimo and SP20 Fox. It's like he remembered. I, I He's got to get... I don't know. Something about being younger and having plastic wrists, I think, is the secret. I don't have plastic wrists. <laughs> I, I challenge wrists. that. Maybe ligaments, not plastic. All right, thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next Saturday. And maybe we'll see you in spring break classes. Talk to your parents. If not, that's all right. Uh, we're going to go through a bunch of Saturdays into April as well. So have fun. Keep coding. Have a great weekend. Stay well, everybody, and code on.